Okay, it is right at four o'clock. So uh, thank you, Gina, for coming and offering our presentation to us on an introduction to user experience. I do want to continue to thank our sponsors, Emerald Data Networks, Equinox Open Library Initiative, and Mobius Libraries. And I will stop sharing my screen so that you can have it, Gina. Yay, get the screen all to myself. All right, well, welcome everyone to my presentation on intro user experience. Uh, my name is Gina. I am a system specialist, Evergreen System Specialist, specifically at Bibliomation. Uh, and our consortium serves uh, a lot of libraries in Connecticut. I graduated, I think, in 2020 with an app development certification from Liberty, uh, as well as an MLS from many years back. Uh, so throughout the time that I've been getting my app certification, there was a particular class that we took on UX, which is user experience, and UI, which is user interface. Uh, but for just the purpose of this uh, presentation, we're going to talk about user experience. Um, so I think a lot of what we're going to talk about here is going to probably put the keynote into some perspective if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with user experience or UX, which I'll probably call it interchangeably throughout this presentation. Uh, but user experience doesn't have to be just about software. It could really be about uh, programs. So I'll be talking in terms of like being maybe a librarian and doing like these programs. I used to design escape rooms um, back in those uh, glory days. So you could also do things like that to uh, measure user experience of uh, patron enjoyment in your programs too. Uh, as a side note, there will be many memes, so please enjoy them. Uh, otherwise, we're going to hop right into it. So user experience, uh, at least in the definition that I was able to uh, get from some text, is it's a measuring, evaluating, and evaluating, and evolving, sorry, uh, how end users, librarians, library staff, patrons interact with software services or programs. So um, that's just like a very big, uh, you know, definition of it in terms of like, if we're thinking about on an evergreen sort of platform, we're thinking about our end users, which could be library staff because evergreen has a staff component to it. And there's also the public uh, or the patrons from the OPAC. But it could also, again, apply to programs that um, if there's any library staff in here watching this, um, that you're providing to your patrons as well. So when we break it down, it's more of a cyclical type of uh, process in which we're designing, there's going to be a workflow to it, testing, surveys and feedback. That's a very, very big part of it. And then also repeating. So again, it's very cyclical, not a linear thing at all. We're always going to be evolving and improving upon uh, the services that we have out there. So design. Uh, design could really be a lot of different things. You could just draw something out, which I usually do, or you could also use some wireframing, wireframing being, being very specific, at least to uh, software app development. Uh, so there's a lot of different tools and apps that you could use out there for wireframing. Draw.io is the one that I use. Uh, it's also available in a browser. And um, the, apparently there's a desktop version that just released for this that I have not tried out yet. Uh, but if you do a browser, um, the browser client, then you're going to have to uh, save information in like as a .io file and then um, import and export it as freely as you would like to. Uh, there's also Pencil Project, Mockflow, or Wireframe.cc. Um, I haven't really used much of these because Draw.io for some reason is the one that I keep going back to. But I would say among my peers, I think that Wireframe.cc uh, is probably the one that people like the most. Uh, but in any case, um, draw.io looks like this. And the nice thing too is, although it's very tiny, you'll at least get these slides um, when it's posted to the website. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can use here that don't necessarily need to be um, like boxes or things that are very specific to wireframing for, again, software apps. There's like little word bubbles or like people they could use too. So you could even draw out like a blueprint of something if you have like a physical type of service. Uh, but for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna be uh, just basically pulling from a very, very simplistic uh, wireframe that I created for a get the app page that I'm building in our OPAC for uh, Bibliomation patrons. And what's gonna be is just basically like a separate page in the OPAC that's gonna have information on how to get the mobile app, which is the catalog. Uh, so I did some things like, all right, we have a logo here. There's like the header links and the login just to kind of um, show me where I am in the page. 
Uh, but towards the bottom where it says uh, get the app right here and some text is where the new uh, information is going to be going into. Uh, so I'd just like to pause here for a second and see in chat, does anyone use any other wireframing uh, type software out there? I <laughs> get an escape room at the next each. I might have to do that. Uh, all right, cool. So Andrea just suggested something. All right, I'll uh, move uh, along since there's a little a pencil on a piece of paper. That's it, what I usually do too. I usually uh, draw it out on like a sticky note or something and then grumble about like what things need to be erased before I put it into um, a wireframing app just because for me, it, it's a little bit easier, but for some people, they just might be really super into wireframing uh, because maybe they do, do a little design. Okay, yeah, and Andrew also starts with pen and paper too, cool. All right, so uh, this part is the workflow, which is basically kind of like making directional input uh, and design. So anything that's like functioning or actions. So again, I think that's why Escape Room is a really, really good example of something that's like not a software type of workflow. Uh, escape Rooms have a lot of different type of functioning um, things from like, if I unlock this lock, then it opens this thing. Or if you're someone like me, you put a lot of red herrings in an escape room just to drive your patrons crazy. It doesn't go anywhere, so you might have to circle back to something else. Um, so that's like one really good example of like a library program that I did in terms of workflow. Uh, for this one, it's a very, again, very simplistic example. We're back to the Get App example here again. And what I'm doing here is just showing links between this is how to get to the Google Play Store if you have an Android, and we're going to use the Apple Store for the Apple example. Then I also filled out some other uh, information here, like the footer, um, some screenshots. They're like laid out in a table and a bullet list if I wanted to do something like that. So um, when you're doing like wireframing too, it's going to display the steps from getting one place to another if you want to think about it that way. Uh, just as a side note, what I like about Drop dot io is that when you initially get the um template up i don't know how else to describe it it doesn't need to be within like the specific frame that it has of like maybe like eight and a half by eleven like a legal paper sheet or letter paper sheet sorry uh, but if you do expand it it actually expands the entire template as well so i find that very useful um, and if you really want to get into like crazy um, wireframing and app development, there's like very specific, um, like there's like a like a key or two or a legend of like a diamond is probably like a function or something um, versus like uh, a loop, which is also done differently. So if that's of interest to you, uh, wireframing could possibly be the next thing. All right, so testing. Um, I love this meme because it <laughs> kind of like embodies how I feel sometimes. Uh, but that's just like how it is. Like everything's going to have bugs. Everything needs to uh, evolve on itself, which is going to be like, I guess, the keyword for this presentation. Uh, so testing is going to be super, super important. So um, you're going to be testing not just the activity or the function of how a software works or a program, whatever it is, a service, we could call the service for now, but also the experience, which is the experience part of uh, UX and user experience. So it, you might have to ask some questions. I find these very helpful whenever I'm trying to think outside of the box besides like, okay, this link doesn't work. Or um, whenever I do this, like an error shows up. Outside of functionality, when we're thinking about UX too, is this a user-friendly um, interface or does it require specific knowledge and how to use it? That's a very important question that you have to think about when testing things. Um, and for one of, I think my 100 level course for um, just computer science and the app development uh, program, one of our tasks was to watch someone do like an everyday task in whatever type of software that they use. Um, so it could even be like data input or data entry, which I asked my friend to do who works in pharmaceuticals. Um, and he was a salesperson at the time. So I would watch him put in all this information that's probably really dry and boring to everyone who's not employed at that company, or maybe so. Um, and you just have to like look and kind of measure and ask yourself um, for the write-up in the report, um, was this like a user-friendly thing? Am I able to, if I was just someone from the public who just randomly like showed up and started using the software, am I able to understand like how it works? 
Um, or do I actually need to have specific knowledge um, in how that works as well? So you have to think about your audience in that way. I think Evergreen is a very good example of that with the staff side. You do need specific knowledge in how to use it and work it, especially if you're doing something like acquisitions or cataloging. Um, and then there's also the user friendly side, which is the patron side. That's the open uh, public uh, OPAC. So I feel like Evergreen is a good example of like showing two sides of that coin. Uh, how many clicks does it take to get to a certain screen? Uh, so that type of like trafficking and getting to somewhere is like why uh, sometimes minimalism drives me crazy because <laughs> it might take me a few clicks to get somewhere. Uh, so you have to think about that as well. And what's nice about Evergreen, I think, is that it has multiple options on how to get to different screens. Um, a navigation bar is probably like one of the best things that you could have um, that could probably remedy a problem like this where it takes probably five clicks to get to a certain place. Whereas you could just go ahead and stick it up in like a shortcut menu or something like that. So um, that is something to consider. And of course, bugs, testing bugs all the time, but we're going to uh, expand on that and how, um, you know, we, we deal with bugs and evergreen in the next slide, I think. And yes, it is. Uh, but before we get there, is there any questions? <laughs> yeah, the image is great. <laughs> um, all right, so um, I like this meme as well because you you know like when you're playing a game on your phone or like you're using an app and it just pops up with this thing like oh did you like our game would you like to give us feedback and you're like no I just want to play this game um, you do have to be that persistent in getting surveys back uh, if any of you could attest to this please put it in the chat if you have an MLS or like a master's in some sort of um, form uh, there's that great project that you have to do <laughs> in which you have to write a thesis. And for a lot of us, um, sometimes gathering that data was to do surveys. So uh, surveys are very, very important because it's the probably, I think, one of the most direct ways that you could get some um, data collecting and feedback on how uh, people are using your software or service. Uh, sometimes it could be a pain to try to do that in which you could probably offer some sort of incentive um, or just even make your surveys like kind of short and concise in order to get that information out there. But of course, surveys are one way to do it. Uh, focus groups is probably my favorite, but I'm going to circle back to that because it's going to be uh, the next slide in this presentation. Uh, but we have uh, two events that happen uh, throughout the year uh, within the Evergreen community. So if you are on the Evergreen community's um, general discussion list, that's announced there as well. And Feedback Fest and Bug Squashing Week. Really good way to get some feedback on that. Um, and basically, both of them serve different purposes, but have, I think, like similar um, uh, environment to it in which the uh, community test servers are up. Um, is there's a bug that's on Launchpad uh, that's come up and it's uh, fixed by somebody, but they want to get that sign off. We'll put it up on um, a community test server and then uh, those get uh, looked at through the community. So you don't have to be someone who is like a, a dev or anyone who has very, very specific knowledge on um, developing Evergreen or systems administrator. You could be someone who is just a user on there um, and just participate in bug squashing week that way. Um, and that is just uh, run very, very well. Um, Darren does a lot of those and it's just like fantastic. Uh, Feedback Fest is also the same Pretty much the same thing too, uh, mostly with wishlist items. Unless someone wants to correct me in chat, please feel free to. Um, I've only been working in the Evergreen community. This is like my third year in, and I have to say it's a, it's a really good way to also get to know new features um, or things that are like coming up uh, down the pipeline and also the system uh, well too, because I was working on Triple Live, which was a proprietary system uh, before Evergreen. So even if you're someone new to Evergreen, that's a really good way to uh, know the system as well. And of course, follow up, follow up all the time. That's something that is instilled ingrained into my brain since I started training uh, when I was a reference librarian. Follow up all the time with your patrons. Hey, we're able to find everything that you needed. Um, or if it's like, you know, it's something that comes to mind where it's like, oh, I have to give you a day to get back to you on this. Um, there are some times where it, I know that there's just times where we have like those types of situations or problems where it's like, uh, it's taken a long time for me to solve this issue and you kind of drag your feet on it, but it is important to follow up on those, especially when you get a solution, because you never know, um, if they might need to come back to you, if it's like not actually fixed or not. So following up brings that whole cycle around. All right, so uh, there's a great Easter egg in this image, and if you find it, please put it in chat. 
Otherwise, uh, we're gonna talk about a case study that we have over at the Blamation and what we do to also get some feedback. So we formed a steering committee in which it's um, people who is a part of our consortium uh, and we try to pick people from different uh, areas of expertise. Uh, we try to get people who do acquisitions. We try to get people who um, are directors, uh, people who work at CERC, et cetera. Um, so that that way we could get a more well-rounded environment in terms of people uh, giving us feedback on things. Um, so usually our meetings, um, we go over some updates. Uh, this is probably part of the follow-up process, depending on what's going on. So I'm like, hey, I fixed that thing that we talked about last time, or we might have to revisit this because I have follow-up questions for you, um, or even just updates of then what's going on in Evergreen uh, with our consortium throughout the month. Uh, sometimes we vote on new designs or features uh, and get some feedback on that if necessary. Um, we also talk about the Evergreen project um, or topics. So um, these could be things like the ECDI, big development ideas, um, those particular projects that happen. Um, the role in the community, what they as library staff um, can contribute to the community. So that's a very big part of it too. Uh, new upgrade features, so they could also test that out as well. If we have an upgrade coming down the pipeline and we put it on a test server. Uh, we demonstrate new features as well. And we also talk about evergreen best practices. Uh, these typically come up when people have specific questions about how to do this or this. Uh, and sometimes we just kind of go around the room and say like, well, what's the best way for you to do this? Um, and what's nice about evergreen is that it just has so many options. Uh, so there probably are different ways uh, to work around uh, certain situations uh, if discussed. Uh, we also talk about webinar ideas and members also bring in their questions uh, that they try to pull from themselves or their own staff um, saying, how do I do this or this? Or if there's like a type of feedback that they give us as well. Uh, so the steering committee, I think like the first couple of meetings that we had, we just started this last year, uh, was just pretty much going over <laughs> the evergreen community. Uh, that was like the first two meetings that we had, and they're about like 90 minutes each because there's just so much information to go over. Uh, but we try to uh, do different segments uh, if necessary, uh, depending on what's going on in terms of evergreen updates. All right, so to close this out, um, and I'm, I'm actually impressed that I'm doing well on time, uh, it takes a village. So when we're thinking about localizing UX. We also have to think about how we're going to introduce that into our community as well as a whole. So how do we globalize and centralize UX in the Evergreen community? Um, maybe we would talk about relationships between the end users or library staff to Evergreen community members. Um, how do we bridge that gap? Uh, sometimes we get questions from uh, library staff asking like, what, what is our role in Evergreen? Uh, what things are we responsible for, for the Evergreen community? And those are types of things could be probably um, answered by maybe we'll have uh, or consider a public webinar or Q&A for library staff specifically. Uh, maybe we could discuss involvement uh, between committees and how we want to talk about UX uh, with Evergreen or maybe even get a subcommittee going. Uh, those are some things to think about. Uh, how do you implement in-house UX or have it more localized? Um, do you want to do something like a group like uh, Bibliomation does with a steering committee, or maybe you have some other ideas. Um, it could be surveys. It could be, you know, maybe you have your own like little mini feedback fest as well uh, with a public test server. Do you have a public test server that you're able to uh, put up for your own localized uh, consortium or library system? Uh, I know that we do, and that's what we're gonna be doing um, with our Spanish translation, for example. And we also put that up when we were uh, moving from the TPAC, the traditional OPAC to the bootstrap OPAC um, that's available for our uh, library staff and patrons now. And how do we foster user experience, talents, or skills in our staff? Um, I always think about when I was a reference librarian um, and how uh, much my library director put a lot of investment in me to explore and have professional development that wasn't necessarily like super librarian. Um, it was things like taking a look at uh, makerspace that we were trying to implement at the time and seeing like what kind of things we could foster with our staff to get um, the public involved. So maybe do we have staff members who like to design things? Um, do we have staff members who are very knowledgeable in certain areas of Evergreen? I know that for myself, uh, I don't necessarily look at acquisitions and cataloging a lot. So I have to talk to cataloging and acquisition staff 
um, internally within the consortium office and also uh, within our libraries and get some information feedback from them. And do we have staff members who like to test bugs or give feedback? That again, a feedback fest and bug squashing week is a fantastic way to get involved in the Evergreen community. Um, if you're someone who really wants to take like a first step into things. So um, that's also put up in the Evergreen calendar too. So go to evergreen-ils.org if you want to start uh, getting involved in those ways. All right, so um, I will answer some questions, but before that, I just want to say, so join us uh, for HackFest on Friday. Um, I would love to talk some more about UX and also within the Evergreen community there. It's a free uh, day where we will just uh, talk about all kinds of different stuff, um, not necessarily just UX. It could be development things, documentation. Um, there's the Authority Fest that's also coming up that day as well. So uh, registration is still available for that. All right. Kim's confused. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad that uh, uh, Simu was uh, noticed there. <laughs> Uh, I thought like, hey, I don't know if I want to put stock photos, but I heard that uh, he did a whole bunch of stock photos like before he was at Kim's Convenience. So let's put it up there. Uh, so I'm kind of uh, taking a look around to see if there's anyone. Um, do you have like uh, focus groups or any uh, things you want to share? Please put it in chat or uh, join us uh, if you uh, brave the internet space and would like to be on camera. Like I would love to know what uh, people are doing. Okay, so Andrea said uh, giving people test workflows and test use cases is really helpful too. I definitely agree with that. And um, I have to admit that I was not really using wireframing as much as I should. Uh, so um, I think that's a really good suggestion, especially for um, our steering committee to uh, put something like that out there. Um, so that way I don't have to design something and then have to rebuild it because I put something in the wrong place, et cetera. All right, Taryn, thank you for putting uh, the bug squashing uh, link in there. Really appreciate that. Um, she also has made a clarification. Uh, so they run the same, but Feedback Fest focuses more on new features. Yep, and bug squashing week focuses more on bug fixing. <laughs> a lot of people seem to have a kick out of that stock photo. I'm, I'm really... Uh, Grateful for that. <laughs> All right, great. All right, so I was just uh, wanting to make that more of an introduction not uh, to get like too, uh, too specific about things. And um, again, putting some context, um, if you popped into the keynote and um, you know you weren't really sure about user experience, so hopefully that could also put some things into perspective and you could watch these back because they will be posted on the public YouTube. Um, and my slides will be posted as well. So, yep, just some things to think about. Um, I really appreciate people uh, tuning in for this. Um, hopefully you could uh, get your mind going and seeing how you could implement some in-house user experience stuff too. And again, it's not just specific to um, software. You could have it for all kinds of different services. You're probably doing it right now and you don't even know it. Okay, well, Katie, it's it, it so happens that I'm going to be moderating the next. <laughs> <laughs> we get to switch places because I'm presenting. So uh, I hope you have a good break. Uh, but if anyone wants to talk about UX, I mean, I got to stick in here till our next uh, session. So let, let's see when that will be. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Excellent presentation. Thing. All right. All right, so at 4.30, uh, open source software and beyond. Uh, perfect thing to uh, roll into next will be uh, showing up. So let me get my other slides up. Uh, sometimes you just have to laugh. All right. All right, we'll see you back here at 4.30, uh, but let's see what else is going on. We have um, in, in the Circ Interest Group also meeting at 4.30 at track two. Uh, exhibitors are, oh, I think the exhibiting is uh, over now, but. Uh, make sure to pop in there when you can tomorrow and talk to those exhibitors too. I saw the chili fresh thing and I was like uh, pretty stoked about it. All right. Well, thanks everybody. And uh, I guess I'll see you back in a few minutes if you're second around.